So far this week, I've defined both integrals indefinite and definite. The second is the focus of the next few sections of the course. I have a Riemann definition of this integral. That's really good, but how do I actually calculate these definite integrals? The Riemann definition is very good mathematics, but it's basically impossible to calculate with. I need a method. To get this method, I need to look more carefully at the Riemann definition. I'll do this for just a two-variable function for now. Here's the setup. For two-variable functions, I can split this up into two sums, once over each of the two single-variable intervals that define the double-variable interval. Interval. This delta a, the small piece of area in a subdivision of the interval, is the product of a small piece of y and a small piece of x, delta y times delta x. Then I can put the limit of the y piece inside the sum of the x pieces. I can do this because this sum and limit don't directly affect each other because they deal with different variables. But when I do this, the term within brackets is just the single variable Riemann definition of the integral in the y variable. I can write it this way, using the y bounds from c to d from the interval. But note, this term in the integral, it's no longer a function of y. After the integration, the y variable is gone and only the x remains. Therefore, this is just a complicated function of x. And now the rest of the pieces here match the Riemann definition of an integral in the variable x, so I can write that integral. The result is that this two-variable integral can be calculated as an iterated integral, integrated in one of the variables first and in the other second. Much like partial derivatives, I can work by, um, piece by piece. But here this is actually much better, since the so-to-speak partial integrals nicely iterate to give the whole multivariable integral together. The same setup is exactly true for three variables. The sums get more complicated, but the result is the same. The integral of three variable function is just three iterated integrals of single variable integrals. And I could keep going into higher dimensions if I wished. This is how I will calculate the integral, by doing iterated integrals. This is going to help a great deal, since all I need to know is single variable integration techniques. Not that those techniques are easy, but at least there's nothing extra on top of that. In the iterated integral, there was an order of the variables. Does that order matter? Well, recall Clairaut's theorem for mixed partial derivatives. The order didn't matter there, at least under some pretty mild conditions on the function. Thankfully, the same is true here. The order that I set up the iterated integrals doesn't matter, at least as long as the function you start with is piecewise continuous. This one is called Fubini's theorem. 